Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I couldn't close my empties drawer, which you know what that means. It's time to finally do another empties video. <laughs> I definitely don't have as many empties as like my last video. I think I had like twice the amount of usual empties I have, but like in this one we have like bigger bottles than usual, so my <laughs> drawer got full a bit quicker than usual, but I still literally have an entire bag full of empties to tell you guys all about. I've got all the bochinche on these products. If you want to catch any of my other empties videos, I'll go ahead and throw the whole playlist up in the cards. I honestly have no idea how many I have right now, probably around uh, 9 or 10-ish in that neighborhood maybe. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is just go ahead and separate these products out into makeup, skincare, hair care, body care, and then we'll jump right in. Boop, that body care, body care, that's hair care. Face. So I've got some body care, a decent amount of hair care and skin care, and then the most of what I have is actually makeup. So we're going to save makeup for last. Let's jump in first with body care. I actually have two lotions here to talk about. This lotion is from Gold Bond. This was gifted to me through Influencer, and this is the Gold Bond Ultimate Radiance Renewal Oil Infused Cream. I loved this for like all over my body when I did the review of this. I was like more than halfway done with it. Uh, Influencer, thankfully they give you like a full month to do your review, so what I like to do is use the product for literally as long as I can and then post my reviews. I liked this for all over my body but not on my hands. For my hands I like a thicker kind of cream just because I'm washing them more often, I'm using a lot of hand sanitizer, trying to be clean and everything, and also we've also got the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19 to worry about, make sure you're washing your hands. There's been a lot on Twitter about exactly how to wash your hands. Just make sure you're washing your hands and being careful. But uh, because I do that, I do like to moisturize whenever I wash my hands. So I, I liked this for my body because it was really good. It felt really oily, like in a good way. But on my hands, it just wasn't what I was needing. But I did go through the whole thing. I emptied out the entire container and I liked it. I just wouldn't use it for a hand cream but I would use it for the rest of my body. Next, this is from CeraVe, and this is their moisturizing cream uh, for normal to dry skin. I originally picked this up to use on my face, and it was a bit too thick. It was really moisturizing, but I felt like it wasn't sinking in to my skin fast enough in the mornings before I put makeup on. And then also when I use this at night, even when I use this a couple of hours before bedtime, I feel like most of it was coming off onto like my pillows and stuff. So this was actually a really awesome body cream as well. And this is also a really good hand cream. This is really thick, really moisturizing, and I felt like it works really well all over my body, just not my face. <laughs> It's really affordable. I use it on my face for quite a while, but I just feel like, especially because this winter has been really mild, it hasn't been, I don't think, nearly as dry or as harsh as last winter was. So I kind of got this expecting it to be a bit drier, a bit harsher, uh, and that I was going to need this. But as of right now, I don't need this amount of moisture on my face. But this worked wonders on my hands and on my legs. It was awesome. And I loved the uh, the little pump up here. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to recycle the whole thing or if I'm going to keep like the top and try to buy another one and just put this back on. I'll take a look at it. But um, I loved the packaging. I loved the product. It was just really good and really thick. So I wouldn't recommend using this on your face unless you have like the driest of dry skin. Next, I'm so sad about this product because I literally can't find it any in any stores anymore. I might have to just buy this online. This is from CeraVe and this is the Hydrating Micellar Water and this is literally the best micellar water I have found and tried. This gets, like I don't have to even like barely touch the, the pad to my eye, the, the makeup's off. It gets uh, mascara, liner, all my brow product, everything. It just comes off. Psh, liquid lipstick comes right off and this is so good i've been like haunting every target every cvs every walgreens that i stop by i can't find this in store anymore so i think i'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and just buy it online because it's honestly the best uh micellar water i've tried it's really good it's really affordable so i, I need to just find this online because i've tried some other ones i've got some other micellar waters downstairs i'm trying out and they're not as good not nearly as good so I need to just find this again online and buy it. Speaking of makeup removers, we have from Physicians Formula the Perfect Matcha 3-in-1 Melting Cleansing Balm. This, I will say, for the amount of makeup that I wear, using this to take off my makeup 
was a bit of a process. Like I would take a little bit into my hands, mush it up and get it wet and then start massaging here. And I don't know if I, maybe I just wear too much makeup for this, but like recently when I was trying to use it, I ended up having to use a makeup remover and wipe to like go after this because this didn't take everything off. And even what it did take off, I felt really, it felt oily and I could still see makeup there. So like it wasn't enough for me to then go in with my regular face cleanser. I don't know. Like I thought I did an okay job when I went in and took it off with a makeup wipe. But I feel like the point of this is to not use a makeup wipe, right? So I don't know, maybe I just wear too much makeup, maybe it just doesn't work for me, but I don't know if I would repurchase this just because I, I do have to go in afterwards with a makeup wipe and then with my normal cleanser. Next, this is a vitamin C serum from The Ordinary. The Ordinary has a whole bunch of different vitamin C serums, and what I did is I took a look at their list of serums, and I bought one of each of like incremental volumes of vitamin C, if that makes kind of sense. Right now I'm on the second bottle, so it's a different one. This one is the Exorbic Acid 8% and Alpha Ar Arbutin 2%. I don't really think this did much of anything other than maybe prep me more for the next step of vitamin C that I used from The Ordinary because I will say my skin didn't get any worse using this, but I didn't see any remarkable improvements while using this and I feel like maybe this is more of a stepping stone because to go through a full bottle of this takes me about a month and a half maybe two th two months and the vitamin c I was mainly using in the morning so maybe if you used it morning and night it'd take me closer to a month but I didn't see anything particularly shocking exciting happen when I used this but uh, I do appreciate that I spent the time building myself up because the next level of um, vitamin C that I got is higher percentages. So I think maybe what I had to do is just start building myself up incrementally to that percentage because the bottle I haven't tried yet is the highest percentage of vitamin C and I feel like I couldn't just go in straight with that bottle. I started with one of the smallest dosages, worked my way up to the second bottle, and then I have that third bottle that I still haven't tried yet. But the bottle I'm using right now I actually stopped using it for a little bit because I'm testing out some other skincare that I got gifted through Influencer, but I did see differences with that one. I saw remarkable differences in some dark spots and in my overall like glow. So that I do see a difference in. And if I had to use this for a while to build up like my skin in order to handle that bottle, I would say it's worth it. But on its own, I wouldn't repurchase this specific one. Next, we have the CeraVe Skin Renewing Cream Serum. I love this. This is basically my dupe for the really expensive Luna Night Sleeping Oil from The Ordinary, not The Ordinary, from uh, Sunday Riley, from Sunday Riley. My only downside, again, to this, I had to buy this online because I couldn't find this, again, in stores. Why is it whenever I find a good drugstore skincare product, they just disappear from all stores? I don't know what it is. But I did buy this one online. I think I have one more backup back there. I did stop using this recently. Again, I'm trying out some different skincare, but I, I love this. I've seen this work just as well as that Luna oil, and I will continue to buy this. I actually got this on Amazon, so if you're interested, I'll link the Amazon link that I found because I forgot if it's a pack of two or if I just bought it twice, but I can only now find it like on Amazon. Last for skincare, I have this uh, Agave nighttime lip therapy from bite this is actually like one of my favorite lip treatments i've ever tried i loved using this right before bed i would basically slather it on i felt moisturized i felt like it stayed on and sunk in slowly and so it was perfect for nighttime and oh, i loved it and sometimes in the morning if i was going to take my time and spend a long time on my makeup i would put this on right before i started so by the time i was ready for lipstick it was totally sunken in and it just felt so good and moisturizing. This I would buy on its own. I like this better than any other bite product that I've tried. So uh, this tiny little sample product, I got this as like a point reward through Sephora. This tiny little thing lasted me like a month. So I would definitely look into a full size of this. I don't know what it cost, but I I'm interested. It worked really well for me. Let's jump next into my hair care empties. I have quite a couple of different products here. First, let's go into one that I've already talked about because I've already gone through several of these. The RMB Hair Moisturizer from Lush. I love the smell of this. It is a 
what is it? Avocado butter and jasmine. Oh, I think I got a little bit on my nose right here. But this is great. This jumbo size cost like $60 or $70, which I know is bananas. But I use this to deep condition my curls and it just works so well. And it smells amazing and I love it. It's a little bit too heavy for styling unless you use it just on like your ends. It's super moisturizing. It's awesome. I actually bought another one. <laughs> I know I said I wasn't going to. I actually got a um, $50 gift card to Lush for my birthday. Uh, so I used that and I only had to pay $20 for it. So I have another one back in my hair care little center. And I'm still using it, deep conditioned with it just the other day. And I still <laughs> love it. I love this. I, th I don't know if I'm ever going to stop buying it. I know it's really expensive. I wish they would change the price. But it's good and honestly it's worth it the price. Next let's talk about, ooh, let's not drop it. Next let's talk about two products from a line that I tried from Sally's. These are both from the Zotos All About Curls line. I have the No Lather Cleanser and then I have the Bouncy Cream. I wasn't a huge fan of this Bouncy Cream. I felt like it was a bit too slimy for my hair. When I'm looking for a cream to put in or a leave-in treatment, I need something that's a bit more lightweight and moisturizing. I feel like this kind of stripped my hair a bit and I, I wasn't the biggest fan of the bouncy cream. The no lather cleanser I felt worked really fine. It just, bleh. like I didn't see any different effects on my scalp, but I couldn't test it for a long time. I can only use this like three times because this tiny little sample is three fluid ounces. So I think three times might be generous. I think it might have been closer to two and a half times that I was able to actually use this. So uh, it was fine. It didn't immediately do anything terrible, but like nothing remarkable. Next, I have a uh, product from Madison Reed that was gifted to me in PR. This is their Color Protecting Smoothing Cream. Now, I picked this up because after they sent me their hair color in PR, they wanted to gift me one other styling product to use afterwards, and I picked this one. This was before they came out with their curl products. So now technically, I think they do have a couple of different curl products that I'm really interested in, but at the time that I got this, this was kind of the closest product available, which was this color protecting smoothing cream, which I kind of thought would be along the lines of like a bouncy cream, uh, but... I mean, it worked fine. It smells really strong. It smells almost like uh, hair dye. So I don't know if that's specifically to protect the color. My hair technically is colored still because I colored it a few months ago. <laughs> I forgot when exactly with Madison Reed. Um, I haven't seen really any huge difference just because my hair is already dark brown and I dyed it black. Not a huge difference <laughs> to most people, but I, don't, I really don't see any shine or any dullness of my shine or anything. I think that still looks good. And this was just a, a decent smoothing cream, essentially. That's it. I used it from like the ears down because I felt like it was a little too heavy to use all the way up here. And it was just okay. I, I'm actually really more interested in their new Curly Girl products. No doubt. I misspoke. They're not Curly Girl products, but they're products from their line directed towards people with curly hair. Speaking of curly girl, if you missed my <laughs> bochinche chat where I talked about diva curl, I'll throw it up in the cards. And also before this, I should have had my most recent um, wash day hair routine, diva curl free, come out. So I will also throw that up in the cards if you're interested. All right, my last hair care product is from Not Your Mother's. And this was actually a gift from my aunt for Christmas. Thank you, Titi. And this is from their Curl Talk line. This is the Frizz Control Sculpting Gel. This shocked me. I was so surprised at how much I liked this, considering it only has a three hold. Like normally when I go for gel, since my hair is so frizzy and thick, I tend to go for uh, extra hold or thick hold or like all the way up to a five. This is a three and worked wonders on my hair. The only downside is I did have to use a lot of it. So this uh, six fluid ounces bottle only lasted me like two months, which is, uh, I mean, when you look at it, this is pretty affordable. Two months is actually a good amount of use, but uh, I kind of wish I had gone further. I'd like to buy a, bo a bigger bottle of this. This just worked really well. It held my hair in curls in place, but didn't make them crunchy. And it, it just, I had like beachy curls. It just oh, looks so pretty. And I was shocked because normally I go for extra hold when it comes to my gels and not this. So this is definitely something I will be repurchasing. 
Okay, so let's switch over now to makeup. So on to the makeup. I have quite a few foundations this time around, so let's jump straight in. First, I have my go-to white mixer because I am pale as Casper. <laughs> this is from LA Girl. This is the Pro Coverage HD Longwear Illuminating Foundation just in the white shade. I can't even count how many of these I've gone through now. I tend to just buy them at CVS because they're always there. They're always in stock. I did try their other, they actually have a smaller bottle that is like labeled as a white mixer. I didn't like that one as much as this one. So I tend to just stay with this one. It works really well. I like the packaging. I can scrape everything out. It's like $8 a bottle and I always have one on hand. Uh, before we jump into the foundations, one more primer. This is an eye primer that I hated and I just almost dropped it. This is from Fenty and this is the just the eye primer and I couldn't stand this. Every time I used this I got weird like chunky texture on my eyelids. Nothing blended on top of this. Nothing set on top of this. I, I was just so disappointed. I just couldn't get this to work at all and so I used this for a couple of weeks and then I just gave up and said I just can't. I can't. This didn't, this didn't work for me at all. So I think it's probably my first like overall Fenty fail. And the fly liner too. I wonder, I got a mini kit with this and the fly liner and the fly liner didn't work for me either. I'm wondering if maybe like their mini ones just aren't as good or if the products just aren't as good. Either way, I hated the eye primer. First foundation I'm going to talk about is one that I've already sung the praises of 10 times over. This is from AOA Studio, the Shop Miss A in-house brand, and this is the Buildable Satin Foundation. The shade that works best for me right now is 301 Porcelain, which I believe is their lightest shade. I love this foundation. I just kind of wish they gave you the option to buy it in a bigger bottle because I go through this kind of quickly because it's so small. It is a uh, 0.64 ounces instead of the standard one fluid ounce. I kind of wish they would come out with a one standard fluid ounce bottle just to make it last a little bit more, but I don't mind because it's a dollar. It's literally a dollar. I can just buy five and like be good. <laughs> uh, I love this foundation. Uh, medium buildable coverage, beautiful finish, affordable. I can't, I can't stop talking about it. It's awesome. Next, a foundation that reminded me of that uh, Shop Mise foundation. So I brought it back up to use it and finish it up. This is from The Ordinary and this is the Serum Foundation. Now this shade was way too dark for me. This is 2.0 neutral. And I liked this one a lot more than the Coverage Foundation of way back in the day. I think back when I first started my channel, these were first released. And I got the Serum Foundation and the Coverage Foundation. And based on the descriptions, I thought I would like the Coverage Foundation more because I like my coverage. But that looked cakey and didn't work really well on my skin. The Serum Foundation was incredible. I love this foundation. I do need to figure out like what my better shade match would be now because this is not my skin. <laughs> it's way too dark for me. But I, I would repurchase this. I just have other foundations I'm using right now. And I think maybe this is similar enough to the Shot Missé that maybe I don't need both. But I like it and it's affordable. Next we have a foundation from... A brand that has fallen from grace. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation and I actually really liked this foundation. This was so good. It was a nice dewy satin kind of finish. Perfect for the winter when I'm looking for a little bit of extra glow because I'm feeling so dry like a, uh, a pale raisin. <laughs> This was just so good. I went through it much quicker than any other foundation I tend to go through because I was just reaching for this day after day after day. I got the shade 120W. I could have gotten a lighter shade because I did have to lighten this. You see, it's a bit dark. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I really i am on the fence about buying from Anastasia Beverly Hills again. But I liked this foundation. And I would buy it again, even at the higher price point that this is. I would buy it again, but just I'd have to find a better shade match because... For something this expensive, I don't want to have to mix it. So I don't know. What do you guys think? How do you feel about purchasing from ABH? Next, we have another one of my all-time favorite foundations, also affordable. This is from CoverGirl, and this is the Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. I tend to reach for this in the summer because it is a good sweat-proof, heat-proof, everything-proof foundation for the summer. I pulled this back out just to try mixing with it and using it and it actually also works well for me in the winter. 
surprisingly. This is the shade 705, which I, I don't know. Do they go any lighter? I'm just pale. I don't know. I had to lighten this. But I, I am happy to know that this does work for me, like, in the off season. Because I tended to only buy this in the summer and then go through it pretty quickly because I used it in the summer. But it's good that this is affordable. It's got a big shade range. It just works for me year round. So I will definitely be rebuying this. I just don't know what shade I'm going to be. Because I'm pale. I might just have to go for the lightest shade. I, if 705 isn't the lightest shade, is 705 the lightest shade? I don't know. I have a concealer here that really blew me out of the water and like I'm shocked by how much I loved this. This is from Maybelline and this is the Superstay Concealer. It's a squeezy tube ooh, <laughs> with a like doe foot applicator. So what I did is I used as much as I could of it and then I cut it open and I literally got everything out of the squeezy tube. I'm dropping everything that I could. <laughs> And it just, uh, this worked really good for me. It uh, was a good full coverage concealer. It tended to dry down mainly on its own. I only had to set it like a little bit, which is shocking for me. Normally foundation or concealers that work well for me don't really tend to dry down. The shade was a perfect match. The foundation just looked great after even a full 12 hour day at work. This was really good. I definitely need to rebuy this again. I, I should I should go through the rest of the concealers in my concealer drawer because I have a lot of them at this point, but this is really good and I really want to rebuy it. Let's next talk about some face powders. I have my, of course, AOA Studio Perfect setting powder in the shade Soft Light. I've gone through a couple of these before. I love them. They work well with a lot of different concealers. I love using this to bake for my under eyes and set like my kind of oily T-zone area. I've talked about it multiple times. I love this and will continue to rebuy it because it's only a dollar. And this does last a little bit longer. This is 0.76 uh, grams of product. 0.7. No, just 0.7 grams <laughs> of product. Um, I did buy... I just placed another Shop Miss A order because I really wanted to order um, the brush cleaning soaps. So I bought a couple of those and I think I also bought some face powders and the loose powder was one of them. I do have an affiliate link that does give me a slight percentage of your purchase if you're interested in purchasing anything from Shop Miss A. That is in the description box of all of my videos, so please, if you're interested, only if you're interested, check it out and use my link if you would. Next, I have a product from Physicians Formula. This is the Healthy Powder in the shade LN3. I think this was way too dark for me, but I really liked this powder. It was a good medium coverage powder, set down really well, looked gorgeous on my face. Uh, as I was getting lighter and lighter, I could use this more as a uh, like really light bronzer almost, but just to set like the outer points of my face. When this got to the point where... Um, it was like a ring around the outside and I really wanted to reset it. I frankened it a bit and I mixed it with the um, the Benefit powder. What is it called? The Sexy Mama powder. I had a little bit of that one left. I frankened them both together and made a Franken repressed shadow, not shadow, powder. And I used that to set my face and it worked really good too. I love both those powders. So uh, this did work really well for me. I used up the whole thing. I liked it. Um, I don't think the shade would be great for me, but I think they have shades lighter than LN3 for me to use. It's not my favorite powder. I think my favorite is still the Shop Miss A powder and then the Benefit powder because that Benefit powder is really good. Um, so I don't know if I would rebuy this immediately because I do have quite a few other powders ready to go, but it, it worked well. It worked well for me. Oh, and here we have the fly liner from Fenty. Yes, yeah, so the fly liner didn't work for me. I, it, the thing is, if I had nothing on my lid, this gave me a nice wing and it looked great. If I had anything on my lid, if I had shadow, if I had glitter, if I had a liquid shadow, if I had anything on my lid, this would skip and bump and jump and look terrible. And I gotta say, the days that... There's not many days where I don't wear anything on my lid. I've got stuff on my lids most of the day. And I wanted this to work. So I don't know if maybe it's a fluke and their mini products just are shit. But uh, because of that, I'm not going to buy any full-size eyeliner product from Fenty. Bye. Next, we have this product from ABH. This is what I technically called an empty just because it's totally dried out. And it's almost empty, but I have no... Uh, what I'm trying to say. 
I don't want to try and make this useful anymore because it's almost completely dried out. This is a dip brow in the shade Granite. I actually found a product that I think mainly dupes this that I'm using and it's actually a cream shadow in, in a black shade from Maybelline. So I'm using that instead. I have it in my brows today. Works really well for me. A lot cheaper than this ABH dip brow. And yeah, I mean at this point the dip brow I think is just too expensive. It's not that great. You can definitely find something cheaper that works just as well. Last and certainly not least, I have a mascara empty and this is from Essence. This is my favorite affordable mascara and my favorite mascara of all time. This is the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect mascara. It is the green tube. They have a couple of other colors. The green one is the best. I'm pretty sure I have two. <laughs> I bought two new ones that are not opened yet that I haven't touched yet that I'm going to be using after this. This has just the perfect little wand. It works great for my eyes. It just fans perfectly and it lasts all day and it looks great and it doesn't transfer. It doesn't smudge. Oh, I love this mascara so much. Definitely. If you have not tried this, please check it out. It's so affordable. I get mine at Ulta. They're like $3.99 each. And if you use them for three months, yeah, just the great mascara. <laughs> Whew, man, I feel like I've been just talking nonstop for so long. <laughs> Those are all of my empties. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below what's the last product you used up. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.